country and um I photographed my whole trip as well with my sister and my best friend. Um, and then that was 32 days. So I did a 32 day road trip, made it to California. And now I live in San Diego where I just moved. Um, I've been there about two months now, which is really exciting, but I'm back here for the holidays. Um, and it's exciting for me to talk to you guys because I actually love teaching and I love working with students. I taught photography uh, a little bit in, in New York. I also worked with Jesse over last summer and taught um, the Putney Nat Geo students. That's how I met Jesse. And we went to Italy, Greece, and then Yosemite and San Francisco with Jesse. And that was really cool. Um, and then I'm also teaching photography now in San Diego and um, also doing freelance photography. So I'm a portrait photographer. I mostly take portraits. I've done many different kinds of portraits uh, from headshots to weddings to um, anything, anything you can imagine. I've probably done it in the past eight years that I've been photographing. Um, but I, one of my passions is definitely documenting people um, wherever I travel. So I think what Jesse showed you guys is my Keensburg project. So where my mom lives now is Keensburg, New Jersey. And right down the street from her is a water park and amusement park. And so this past summer, I've been going there and documenting the people there. And I just find it so quirky and interesting and unique to New Jersey that they have this boardwalk and they have this amusement park. And I wanted to document the people who go there, the people who work there, um, and the life that I see there. Because I, I was seeing it every day when I was at my mom's house. So it, I found it interesting. And I used to go there as a kid. Um, and I, I found it beautiful even now as an adult. So, um, yeah, I mean, did you guys see that project? You guys were looking at that? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you're awake. <laughs> um, do you have any questions for me or anything like that? Maybe I'll start off. Uh, can you hear me from back here? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, kind of direct the conversation a little bit. And I'll start by saying every time you say Jesse, there's some giggling going on because I don't oh. know if you guys think I don't have a first name. Maybe. Mr. Stansfield. It's Mr. Stansfield in this classroom. My bad, Mr. Stansfield. <laughs> no, it's all right. Just letting you know if you're seeing some giggling happening, that's why. Got it. Uh, uh, so uh, appreciate the, the, the little background that you gave us and, um, you know, uh, uh, thinking about this Keensburg, New Jersey. Do you think of it as a photo essay or more of a big documentary project? And then um, one of the things that I think would be helpful is how long have you been shooting that project? And is it still ongoing? Uh, we only have two weeks to do our photo essays. And so how does that relate to the way that you think about how a photo essay is done or a documentary project is done? Sure. So um, to answer your first question, I think it could be a little bit of both. So I personally just shoot. I don't think um, before, is it going to be documentary? Is it going to be photo essay? I, I kind of just approach my subjects and approach, approach my project and shoot it as is. And then it sort of forms a project or photo essay later. Um, but I think it could be a little bit of both. You know, I, I think what you guys are learning about as far as photo essays where you kind of are telling a story and you're thinking about sequencing, you're thinking about different kind of shots you can get, not just of people, but of the detail of sort of establishing shots of your whole, um, maybe, maybe your whole setting or landscape you're working in, but also getting into the nitty gritty and photographing the people, the, the details of the location. So I think a documentary project can be a photo essay and vice versa. I think they can have some some overlap, um, in my opinion. But for this project, I started last summer and it was it is ongoing. So I, I started photographing one day. I had free time. I walked down there um, and just kind of scoped it out. I kind of rode my bike around just to see what was going on. I hadn't been there in a few years. So it was exciting for me to re-explore it. And I kind of just took some some practice shots and just see felt how people reacted to me being there. You know, that's really important. When you're creating a photo essay, you want to spend as much time as possible with your subjects so they can get used to you and you can feel comfortable photographing them or photographing that location. And you don't, you don't become a stranger anymore. You become part of 
whatever community or whatever landscape you're in. So I went back the next week and sort of made another presence, started photographing some people who went there. And then one day it started pouring rain, but I was just (laughs) kind of trying to photograph whoever was still there. And I started a conversation with this one guy. I don't know if you saw this guy with the dreads. He's kind of leaning on uh, one of the gates. He and this other guy with a tattoo, the guy I photographed whose arm you saw, they they're really good friends and they started talking to me they they've been best friends they met here in Keensburg and um they were telling me about their story how they grew up here and I think I'm still friends with them on Facebook so that was kind of cool I made a connection I sent the photos to them um they were just such funny interesting characters so I kept going back throughout the summer um and then it closes down in the winter as you can imagine so right now it's closed um And that could be interesting, too, to add a sort of take on what is it like in the wintertime here? Everything's sort of covered and closed. And um, I mean, I might have to hop a fence to get there. Um, But yeah, it could be it could be interesting to sort of add that spin on it. Um, Yeah. And so with these projects, you always want to keep going back and seeing what you can add, seeing what you didn't see before, but also building that sense of community and building that sense of, um, you know, belonging in this landscape or in these communities for sure does that make sense yeah cool. i have one more question and then i'll open it up to these guys um what advice would you give us with only two weeks to shoot and a lot of us are not going to be going up to strangers uh we live in a suburban town it's not um we don't live in an urban environment so there's not a lot happening uh, like in a downtown environment or something like that, right? We live in yeah. we live in a suburban town. We go to school every day. Uh, it's the last two weeks of the semester. Some of us work a job or play sports after uh, school, and this is just one of you know six or eight classes that we have during the day. Definitely. We're not necessarily dedicated photographers. Uh, how are we going to make this work? How are we going to get good pictures for this project? where we don't we're not going to go on a travel uh you know we're not traveling anywhere we're gonna we're gonna be just kind of going about our daily life so how do we how do we make that happen first of all in a short amount of time and second of all with with our let's say boring i think a lot of us might in comparison to traveling around the world taking pictures our boring suburban town of Stoke, right right so definitely can lend some advice there because when i was in college I had similar lives to you guys, and I can remember in high school, too, I was working, I was a resident advisor in the dorms, I had many classes, I had a waitress job, so I barely had time to finish my projects for class as well. Um, And what I actually did was, maybe you saw it on my website, was called the residence project. So I took advantage of my situation and just used what I had in my arsenal to sort of make projects from that. So I worked in the dorm room. I worked in the dorms at school. And so I photographed the residents who lived there, the other students. And I was, you know, on duty at in, in the residence hall, but also used that and photographed them while I was working, you know? So just using your unique situation and making work from that. So I'm sure all of you guys think that, you know, your lives are boring, you know, you just go from point A to point B, you know, I don't have anything interesting in my life, but I'm sure that's not the case. I'm sure each of you have something unique that makes you different from the other person. And you kind of just need to figure that out and use that. So one of the most, um, one of the best pieces of advice I heard from a, a photographer who went to my school and now he works in the field, very successful. He said, Think about what you have in your life that makes you different from someone else. What do you have access to? Does your mom work at a, you know, grocery store? Does your dad work at a movie theater? Or like, do you, do you work at a movie theater? Where do you work? Where do you go? Do you play soccer? You know, what does your commute look like? Do you, does your mom take you in her minivan? Do you take public transportation? Do you carpool? Like, what is your day to day? And just document that. Cause I'm sure it's not the same as everyone else. Like use whatever you have access to. Do you go to like choir? Do you go to church? Do you go, I don't know, what do you do every week that makes you different and stand out? Do you go grocery shopping with your mom or dad? Like figure out those times where it makes you different and stand out in your life and document that. And that will inspire you because 
if that's all you have time for, just use it, you know? It doesn't have to be this grand thing where you travel or take huge chunks out of your day. You can just use whatever you have in your day and push and run with that, you know, run with that. Cool. Great. Yeah. Well, let's open it up. I asked these guys to jot down some questions after looking at your website. Cool. Uh, anybody want to kick us off? When you don't want you like your uh, long trips, do you like how many cameras do you bring? So it depends. <laughs> Sometimes I have about, I think I have about four cameras right now, maybe five. I think I just added one. And I include this as a camera, by the way, my phone, because iPhones are actually pretty good these days. So I, that counts as a camera for sure. Um, but yeah, usually I have my, my SLR, so my Canon 5D Mark III digital SLR. I just added a uh, Sony A6300, which Mr. Stansfield was helping me figure out. <laughs> so I added that one. I just got that. Um, I have two Instax cameras. So Instax mini like Fujifilm Polaroid type camera and then a wide one. Um, and yeah, I have a 35 millimeter point and shoot, but I think it's broken now. So I got to figure that out. <laughs> so that's, that's very similar to what we use, our digital SLR, Canon digital SLR. And our iPhones, that's really our very similar setup. Um, iPhones count for sure. Why did you get into photography? Hmm. Well, I have this brief story that I always tell people when they ask me this because, I mean, I think photographers in general, what makes us photographers is we see differently right like we see in pictures that's what I always say like I look around wherever I go and I see that this could be a photo that this could be a photo but one time when I was in high school I was at a concert and I was photographing the concert with some crappy point and shoot and after the concert I uploaded the pictures to my Flickr account I don't know if you know what Flickr is but I upload them to Flickr and uh, the, there are people, like this, the guy who was singing, Paolo Nutini, is a singer. His people contacted me about my work, and they said we would love to use this photo for his Facebook profile picture. And I was blown away. I was a teenager. I was like, are you kidding me? Of course. Like, that's amazing. I was like, as long as you credit me, um, you can use the picture. So still to this day, you can go on his Facebook and scroll through his pictures and says, thank you, Anna Lynch, for the photo. And it has a link to my Flickr page. So after that, I think I was about 15. And after that, I kind of realized maybe I maybe I could do this. You know, maybe I could seriously consider this. So that was pretty cool. Sure. Any more questions for Anna? Do you have like a, another job besides the photographer? Yes. So when I was in New York, you can imagine it's extremely expensive to live there. So I was not only freelancing, but waitressing actually to make up most of the income. Um, but now that I moved to San Diego, I'm actually doing a ton of different things. So I'm freelancing, I'm teaching photography to like uh, groups, adult groups, but also private lessons. Um, I'm working at the Aja Project, which is a nonprofit that teaches delinquent kids and refugee kids photography. So that's pretty cool. And I'm also working, so freelancing, I'm working at a magazine who um, sends me out on shoots. I'm working for an event company that sends me on a, like corporate event shoots. So yeah, just trying to do whatever I can. I'm also starting, I just started making macrame and I'm selling that at my friend's jewelry studio. So yeah, I'm doing a ton of different things to make some, make some money. Yes. What's macrame? <laughs> it's like so you you know these <coughs> bracelets these friendship bracelets it's like that yes. except they're like big and thick and they're like usually like hemp and they hold plants you know they hang and like hold plants and stuff yeah you can google it later <laughs> uh i have a, a question for the class how many people uh have a sense of what they are going to photograph for this project, yeah. one. Strange, strange. <laughs> one. All right. So this is this is a tricky question. This you know the photo essay. It's a new format to us. The open endedness of it is potentially challenging for a lot of us. Like, what the heck do I do? 
And so, uh, Anna, do you have any recommendations for how to, and you touched on this, I think, a little bit, like what makes you different, what makes you unique, but uh, how to actually brainstorm and come up with um, a subject or a, or a way to, to, to do this project um, for these guys who are like, I don't really know, I don't really know what I'm doing. Definitely. So... What I would recommend is, and some of the best advice that I got, because I took photo essay class in college, actually, and some I was struggling with the same thing. I think I was a freshman, and I was like, we're supposed to make a book, and I was like, what the heck am I going to do? I don't know. You know, I was just a freshman. But some of the best advice I got, which I still use to this day, is find <coughs> out not only what makes you different, like I was saying, but what do you photograph on a daily basis? You guys all have phones, I'm sure, cameras on your phones somehow. What is what is always catching your eye? You know, are you always photographing your friends? Are you photographing, you know, the same shadow that maybe you see on your bus stop or your when you get to school, there's like a shadow that some stop sign that you find beautiful? Like, what are you photographing? Are you photographing your food all the time? Are you photographing your friends, your family, your little sister, your your dog? Find something that always is catching your eye, you know, and, and maybe something is catching your eye, like a sign on a grocery store, or like something in your town that you find beautiful. Photograph that because I'm sure maybe not anyone else is noticing it. And so notice those things, recognize those things that you find beautiful and just start photographing them. And something will come from that. You know, you're not going to see it right away. You're not going to see your whole project. <coughs> on day one you're gonna have to photograph and it's gonna form it's gonna like flesh out later but just start photographing and seeing what dry <coughs> you know what do you find beautiful and go from there what if what if uh 99 percent of the photos i take are selfies? are what selfies selfies okay i know i was afraid someone was gonna say that well <coughs> if you take selfies even if you take selfies every day, and even if that's most of your main camera roll is your selfies, go from there. Like, why are you taking selfies? What are you taking selfies of after you do your makeup, after you get ready for something? Like, make a project out of that, you know? Like, you can even use that. There are plenty of photo projects or photo essays out there that deal with self-image, selfies even, and, like, research that, you know? Like, that's not even... That's not even like a problem if you take selfies all the time. But also push yourself to turn the camera around, you know? Like even if you take selfies all the time, you must want to photograph other things. You know, you must find other things beautiful besides your own face. So, <laughs> so just push yourself. That's all I'm going to say. Like if you want to do a selfie project, great, but I'm sure not all of you are going to be doing selfie projects. So turn the camera around and find something else. Find something else you find beautiful too. Awesome. Other questions for you? We got about five minutes before we want to wrap this up. <laughs> you all you all wrote down questions. Do you like what you do? Who asked that? <laughs> okay, hi. Yes, I do like what I do. Um I love what I do actually. This is to me, this is the perfect lifestyle that I've set up for myself now. When I was when I was working in New York, I was waitressing a lot. And I actually, I do love waitressing because it's so social and because uh, you meet so many different people and it's, it's great money. And I made other connections for my photography there, but it, it didn't feel right. It felt like I was cheating myself. And now, now that I am able to live somewhere else and make money, not only teaching photography and sharing my skills, but also photographing people and yeah, making, trying to make a living doing this, doing many different things instead of one nine to five job is really, really exciting. And I encourage you guys to sort of find that and just go with whatever your passion and um, whatever you love. You know, if, if you want to do, I, for me personally, I couldn't find myself working in an office or a corporate job. It just wasn't my lifestyle and wasn't my personality. So being able to, to find a different lifestyle that's not necessarily a nine to five job is what makes me happy. And I encourage you guys to do that and explore different, you know, employment options when you're older. Um, 
because it, it could make a difference from your happiness, you know. Do you work for yourself? Do you work for like somebody that you take pictures for? Well, I work, I do work for myself mostly, but I also work for a magazine, a local magazine called Pacific San Diego that sends me out on shoots um, usually once a week, just on the weekends. Um, and then there's this other company called Candidly, and they do corporate event photography. Um, and some from time to time, they will hire me as well. But mostly it's just me promoting myself on my own. Which is not easy. <laughs> Do you ever want to start like your own like photography company thing? <laughs> like you know what I mean? Yeah, you because, mean like you know? like my own studio or something? Sure. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. That would be cool one day. Yeah, I've been to a couple people's studios and where I teach photography the guy who runs that business he has a studio and teaches there and that would be cool but also as you have seen most of my work is um, out in the world in natural light I'm actually teaching a natural light portraiture class comes on this Sunday so I'm not a big studio photographer but yeah I mean I would love to have my own my own official business right now I'm kind of just freelancing and it's not I don't have an official business. I mean, I do have my own website and a brand, but to have my own business one day would be really exciting. Yeah. Any last questions for Anna before we wrap up? Any final advice for us? Uh, we're going to get our uh, projects going next week. And uh, anything to like summarize your advice for us for this photo essay project? Yeah, I would say like, Definitely, like I said before, just don't be, first of all, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to just start photographing, you know. I think I was probably, I was probably in a similar mindset with when you guys, when I was your age, which is I was afraid to sort of, didn't know where to start. I was afraid to start, just like writing an essay, a regular essay. You don't know what words to start with. My advice would be don't be afraid, just photograph. And photograph a lot. Like, especially at your age when you guys are just starting, photograph a lot. Just take your phone and photograph all day and go through it and see what catches your eye, which ones are you think are actually good, and then go from there. Just photograph a lot. Photograph all day, every day for the next week, you know, because you can't, nothing will come of just a few photos here and there. And even I do this. When I'm told to do a project, I have to photograph maybe I have 50 photos I need to send them, I photograph 200 and then go down from there. So you always wanna have many, many photos you photograph and you can always edit down from there. It's my, my advice for you guys. <laughs> All right, any last thoughts? All right, well, thanks so much for joining us, Anna. Yeah, round of applause, totally appropriate there. Thanks for your time. Awesome and, to meet uh, you guys. Absolutely, we'll talk to you soon, thanks. Bye. Bye.